So listen, there's this really interesting story that the AP is reporting on. Uh, did you know that there are certain hospitals yeah. that are holding patients, basically holding them because they haven't been able to pay their hospital bill? Yeah. And it's kind of a problem because many of these countries receive billions of dollars in aids from an aid from the United, yeah. United Nations and other sort of philanthropic organizations. It's a fascinating article. I read a part one this morning, but yeah. there's multiple parts of this. Right. So Maria Chang, the reporter uh, who reported on this story for the Associated Press, is joining us. She's joining us on the telephone to talk about this. Um, Maria, when we read the story, uh, it was pretty shocking. I think one of the, you know, what was not surprising to me, at least, having worked and uh, lived in Africa, is that it was an open secret amongst ha hospital staff. But it was surprising that uh, the, the organizations that invest, in some cases, millions of dollars in some of these hospitals were completely unaware of this. No, I agree. That, to me, was very surprising, the fact that we would go into these hospitals where very clearly they're getting international aid money places where we see USAID stickers all over the place and UN trucks. And yet when you ask them about this, they claim they have no knowledge of it. Um, and as you said, it's an open secret. No one made any attempt to hide this. So, Maria, let's sort of go back to the basics, because Vlad and I have had the luxury of, of reading your article, and it's a really well-put-together article. But I think when people hear hostage in a hospital, just, just leave. Uh, you know, so t like, give us the basics about what this is about. There's about 1,000 people, I think, it's in Kenya that cannot leave the hospitals. Um, well, that's, that's based on the estimates that we have. That okay. The biggest hospital there probably has a few hundred patients that they are basically detaining and keeping from leaving because they have not paid their hospital bills. So if these people try to get up and walk out of the hospital, they would be stopped by armed guards. Um, and, and they're also holding, you know, bodies of patients. Their so families can't even bury their loved ones when this happens. So, right. So, I mean, you go to, to, to take your loved one who has passed away and they demand thousands of dollars before you can even leave with, with, this, with the body. So it's not just people who are ill who may, you know, you, you profile as somebody who wants to get better treatment somewhere else and they won't let him leave and he's paralyzed. So he really doesn't have an option. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, there are lots of patients who have been treated as much as they can be treated and would like to go elsewhere or they're fully recovered and they want to go home, but they haven't been able to pay their bills and the hospital is just refusing to let them go, even though this is not something that generates a huge amount of income for them. They just want to do it to prevent people from coming in and thinking they, they could leave without settling their bills. Hmm. So I guess that's sort of the, the question that I have. I mean, you found these hospital imprisonments, for lack of a better word, in at least 30 other countries. You primarily, this part of the investigation that we read is focused on the Congo and Kenya. But it's that when you're talking to hospital administrators, it's, it's the impression that many oftentimes Western journalists have, right, that you'll talk to somebody about an issue that is really, really important to people outside of the country who are interested in what is happening in that one particular country. And they're like, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. I'm not hiding anything. This is what we do because we don't want people to take advantage of us. Is that what you discovered when you were doing your reporting? That is definitely what we found in Congo. I was a bit surprised how open they were in admitting that this is what they do. And, and they don't see it as a human rights violation. Right. That, I guess that, that was my, that, that's sort of what I was getting at, right? They, they, they're not, they, when we read this and we see, wow, this is an AP investigation. This is a really important story. And they're looking at it like, what? This, this is, is business. This, this is, is how we do, we do business. This is how we do it. Yeah, go ahead, Maria. <laughs> exactly. I, I agree completely. And I think for me what was surprising was we might not have confidence in governments where, you know, the rule of law is not very strong. I wouldn't necessarily expect the Congolese government to be on top of this, but I would expect international donors, agencies like the UN and CDC um, and donor countries to know better and demand better that patients are not having their human rights violated like this. So then have you received any sort of response from the United Nations or any other health agencies? Uh, nothing specific. I mean, they're all aware of it, um, and, and they will say that they don't approve of it. Um, but no one's given any indication that they are going to actually try to monitor this or even tell the countries, please stop imprisoning your patients. Mm. Stop imprisoning your patients. Wow. It's just so bizarre. Maria Chang, uh, some incredible reporting. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.